morning and welcome. I'm Selena Mead with the VSB TV 11 Evening News on this Monday, April the 14th. At the top of tonight's news, four people have been displaced from their home after part of the home collapsed and a fire broke out in the early morning hours of Sunday. Several rooms crumbled to the ground, including one of the residents' bedrooms. Chief Fire Officer Lloyd Birchall was on the scene this afternoon, as well as Minister of National Security Michael Dunkley, who came to talk with the residents and neighbors as well as assess the situation. VSB News' Julia Smat spoke with Chief Fire Officer Birchall about the shocking situation. What we uh, could find was that there was um, major flames emitting, as you can see right behind us. And the firefighters very quickly went to attack and extinguish the fire. Of course, first making sure that the building was unoccupied and any persons injured were taken care of. So what exactly caused the explosion or the house to crumble like this? Okay. Um, at this point, we haven't really reached any conclusion. Um, what we have now is just basically theory. We know that an explosion took place. And now what we need to do is to get right down to the heart of the evidence. As you can see, most of the evidence is buried. Um, so what we need to do is do a little bit of excavation and find out exactly um, what took place before we make any conclusions. In your opinion, just going forward, how long do you think it might be time frame wise till they would be able to get rid of you know, the rubble, etc.? Right. If, from our point of view, um, we're hoping that within the next couple of weeks that something can be done. Um, what we need first is to have a, bu a building engineer to advise us as to the safety of us being in the vicinity of some of these walls. As you can see, some of them are bowed out and still present a danger to any other public. So the, the grounds have actually been um, taped off to prevent anybody from coming in here and, and just in case there is a further collapse. Um, once we have established that the building is, is somewhat safe, we will begin excavation, um, partly to get to the evidence and partly also to make the area safe. Minister of National Security Michael Dunkley walked around the entire property and spoke at length with the fire service personnel and the residents of the Border Lane dwelling. Minister Dunkley told VSV News he was shocked by the situation. What's your take on all of this? Um, very shocked and uh, as I always try to do in this position is I always try to come around during these unfortunate circumstances and, and offer support to the people who have been hit by these type of things and, and support for the services. I want to commend the chief and, and the staff for the work they've done in the middle of the night to get here and also I believe the police who were one of the first to, under, to hear about the call and, and, and radio it in. I think it's important to come around into the community and get a sense for uh, what's happening on the ground and also to talk to people in the area and assure them that we will do everything we can within our resources to try to bring life back to the normal uh, that they had before these type of things. Obviously, this incident here uh, is a real tragedy with, with, the, uh, with the fire and the explosion that took place. And I look forward to offering my support to the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service and all the other areas that have to get involved to rebuild these lives. Uh, and I think we can. It will take a bit of time, but I think we can do it. Uh, it's very important to, when, these, when, when tragedy like this hits and people are shocked, it's, it's important to reassure them that uh, there will be better days ahead and we'll get there. Reciprocal effects were now starting to show itself. A major hotel in Bermuda is facing the loss of a thousand strong convention group as a direct result of the publicity that has appeared in the U.S. media following the sewage alert by the U.S. Consul Robert Jet Secchi. And this may be the tip of the iceberg. Sources in the tourism industry report that the large American group is threatening to cancel unless it can receive its own independent test of the quality of the water at Bermuda's South Shore beaches. Official promises that the story had been exaggerated and that regular testing has shown no major contamination issues were not good enough for the organizers of the convention. And the hotel in question is also beginning to receive cancellations from individuals. It is understood that the Bermuda Tourism Authority is working feverishly with its new PR agency to come up with a media campaign that does not do more harm than good. Another meltdown in the middle of a national sporting event involving all-round sportsman Treadwell Gibbons not only marred yesterday's FA Challenge Cup final, but put his sporting career in serious jeopardy. With a large crowd watching in horror at the National Stadium, the Dandytown goalkeeper ran most of the length of the field to punch a North Village defender who had been involved in a scrappy foul with a Dandytown player. 
All three men were sent off, and Danny Tan went on to win 1-0 with the substitute keeper. You will recall that Treadwell Gibbons brought last year's cup match to a standstill when he refused to leave the pitch after being given out, after which the Bermuda Cricket Board gave him a slap on the wrist. Yesterday's Dandy Towns coach, Jamar Wilkinson, had this to say about the matter. What about that incident? Yeah, yeah, um, um, you know, in the heat of the moment, sometimes we can lose our composure. Um, there was a young player mixed up in it. Um, um, hopefully he learns from it and we can move on. Yeah, there are people in the stands saying, the keeper, uh, remember the cup match incident, why can't he stay out of trouble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, he's got a lot of passion for the game and um, he has to learn how to channel that in the right way. And hopefully he does because he's a talent. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's, he's one of the best keepers in Bermuda and hopefully he can tell it, um, um, channel that in the right way. Right. The ascending group, operators of Belco and Bermuda Gas, have reported a dramatic fall in revenues in 2013 as net income decreased from the previous year's total of $13.2 million down from $5.6 million last year. Sales of electricity declined 69 million kilowatts or 10.6 percent, a direct result of the contraction of the island's economy as well as the conservation measures taken by many customers. Residents wishing to donate to the construction costs of the new acute care wing of the King Edward Hospital will be able to buy commemorative bricks in a fundraising scheme that could raise $1.5 million towards the total cost. Philip Butterfield, chairman of the Bermuda Hospital Charitable Trust, explained this opportunity and a number of others to VSB News. Brian Darby. I think it's critically important for all of us to be able to say at the end of the day that we built our hospital. So we're going to have uh, a number of vehicles uh, over the next uh, several months that will allow Bermudians to participate. Uh, later this week we will be unveiling a campaign called the Legacy Walk Campaign. And that's an opportunity for uh, our fellow citizens to purchase a brick in the front entrance to the new acute care wing. Uh, the approach from Point Finger Road into the new facility will have uh, two parallel walkways uh, and uh, we are offering an opportunity for the bricks to be used uh, in recognition of loved ones or members of the community uh, to serve as a memorial uh, to uh, individuals or families. So the bricks will be available at a thousand dollars each. We have an opportunity to sell upwards of 1,500 of these bricks uh, and uh, we think that this is a great way for Bermudians to engage in support of the hospital campaign. And is there anything along the lines of equipment or anything that you'd like to see uh, f you know, targeted? Oh, I think there's also opportunity for us to uh, you know, raise money through uh, you know, providing support for the acquisition of equipment that the hospital will need. And uh, Ralph Richardson, whom you're going to be talking with uh, soon, and I have chatted about the possibility of being able to do that. We'll also have an opportunity for Bermudians to make contributions to the campaign through their local banks. Uh, each of the local banks have come on side uh, to uh, offer a direct deposit either online or uh, in the branches uh, so that uh, we can give every Bermudian uh, the vehicle uh, to participate in this important endeavor. We live in a beautiful environment. One way to help keep it that way is to always remember your reusable grocery bag. If you forgot, you can still do your part in saving our planet by buying a Marketplace green bag for only $1.19. Not only are they good for groceries, but they're handy for many other uses. Always have your bags in sight of you or put your grocery list in one so that you don't forget your reusable bags. You and the Marketplace are helping to save the environment by choosing to reuse. Health care matters, and building a new facility would just add to the care of the citizens. As a cardiac patient, I know that health care facilities and the quality are paramount to recovery. Up-to-date innovative technology and care is the very essence of quality life. For all the reasons why health care matters, we hope you'll consider donating to the Bermuda Hospital's Charitable Trust. Visit our website, whyitmatters.pm, or call 295-2428.
A gentle reminder from the Office of the Tax Commissioner. It's tax time again. Taxpayers are reminded that payroll tax returns and corporate service tax returns for the quarter ending 31st March 2014 are due on or before Tuesday 15th of April 2014. Hotel occupancy tax returns for the month ending 31st March 2014 are also due on or before Tuesday 15th of April 2014. Full payment must accompany returns, otherwise penalties will apply. Taxpayers who are currently eligible for payroll tax relief under the retail, restaurant or hotel concessions must also file completed returns on or before the deadline. Failure to do so will result in penalties. For more information, visit www.taxbermuda.gov.bm or call 297-7807, 297-7750 or 297-7751, making your taxes a little less taxing. And welcome back to BSB TV 11. The Department of Education's Career Pathways Program, already offering certification in nursing, automotive skills, and city and guild employability, has now added the Bermuda Insurance Institute's General Insurance Certificate. Today, Education Minister Dr. Grant Gibbons congratulated the seven students from Berkeley and Cedar Bridge who enrolled in the program and the seven industry partners who are working with them as mentors. We are really grateful to the seven insurance industry partners who are working with our students in the program. And they are uh, Abby Clifford uh, from BFNM, Damian Pitcher from Friesenbook Meyer, Crystal Clay from ACE, Shirley Fountain from Endurance, Gail Miller uh, from Oil Insurance, Brenda Tatum from Ariel Re, and Richard Winchell uh, from ABIC. Our industry partners are not only contributing their time and experience to assist students in preparing for the insurance exams, but they are also underwriting the cost of the exams at no cost uh, to or expense to parents or the Department of Education. I should also note at this point that overall Career Pathways has almost 50 industry partners involved, including eight government ministries. There are approximately 259 students who are participating in a work or career related experience. Since January, the students have been engaged in a 12-week school career work placement exercise. During their experience, they are supervised by a trainer or mentor. Upon completion, the students are evaluated by their mentors at the workplace site using criteria developed by the Department of Education, school leaders, and industry partners. Students who successfully complete their work placement experience receive one credit which contributes towards their graduation. I am pleased to report that Career Pathways has been well received and we have a number of students who have requested to continue in their senior year. I would particularly like to thank Dr. Riddell Tankard uh, who has developed and led Career Pathways since inception. Finally, I wish to thank all of our industry partners for their commitment to our students and their assistance in preparing them for life beyond the classroom. Well, we did promise to keep you in touch with the schedule of environmental films being shown on VSB TV Channel 11 throughout the month of April. So here's the list of the final five films that will be shown either on Wednesday or Friday, both at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. between now and the end of the month. This Wednesday, it will be the end of the line, a sobering look at the future of fishing throughout the world, while on Friday you can watch Renewable Energy, an in-depth look at the sources of renewable energy that are coming to the world and Bermuda. On Wednesday, April the 23rd, is Al Gore's renowned Inconvenient Truth, which examines the global warming phenomenon, while on Friday, Chasing Ice depicts a heroic photojournalist mission to track the melting glaciers in three continents. And to round out our popular series brought to you by Belco, Lindos, and Auto Solutions on Wednesday, April the 30th, be sure to watch Lucinda Sperling's award-winning study of the Cajal called Rare Bird. Well, the iconic international brand, The Gap, will now be sold at Gibbons Company in Bermuda. The Gap Summer 2014 collections will be available at Gibbons Company Department Store starting on May the 16th. The three areas in the store dedicated to featuring GAP collections will be women's, men's, and kids and baby departments. GAP has been around since 1969 and has been offering consumers classic and modern American designs that are both comfortable and accessible. Local customers can expect to find the latest styles that are a modern interpretation of GAP's denim roots and the signature pieces that are a staple for every wardrobe. 
Now let's take a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Global equities rose as robust U.S. retail sales data signaled economic growth, while the euro fell after the European Central Bank gave its strongest signal yet that it would ease policy to cool the signal currency. U.S. stocks rebounded after data showed that retail sales increased the most since 2012. The S&P 500 advanced 0.82% to 1,831. The Dow Jones Industrial increased 0.91% to 16,173. Bermuda stocks were little changed today. Summers Limited closed at 12.25, unchanged on the day, with 1,700 shares trading hands. 9,700 shares of Argus were traded today. The stock closed at $4.83. European indices advanced on the day, led by a rally in miners, while investors weighed violence in Ukraine. The mine IB increased 0.55% to 21,315. Pacific Rim indices were mixed on the day. Chinese shares rose, bouncing back after last week's technology sector sell-off in U.S. markets. The ASX index dropped 1.28% to 5,359. Latin American indices had a mixed performance. Brazil's Bovespa retreated 0.59% on concern that Brazilian policymakers will keep interest rates, keep raising interest rates to control inflation. U.S. Treasury's decline is stronger than forecast economic data, boosted stocks, and reduced the appeal of the safety of U.S. government bonds. The U.S. 10-year Treasury yield increased two basis points to 2.64%. The Euro Bank dropped against most of its peers after European Central Bank President Mario Draghi said further appreciation in the currency would trigger more monetary stimulus. The Australian dollar strengthened 0.24% versus the U.S. dollar. And that was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Price Right or Mill Reach offers you warehouse shopping for bulk and value priced groceries, frozen foods and health and beauty items, home furnishings, dinnerware and carpets for your bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen, bikes, toys, and activity sets for kids, teens, and tweens. Electronics and home and audio visual accessories. Visit Price Right. Always something new and always something for everyone. Open 9 to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 1 to 6 on Sundays. A gentle reminder from the Office of the Tax Commissioner. It's tax time again. Taxpayers are reminded that payroll tax returns and corporate service tax returns for the quarter ending 31st March 2014 are due on or before Tuesday 15th of April 2014. Hotel occupancy tax returns for the month ended 31st March 2014 are also due on or before Tuesday 15th of April 2014. Full payment must accompany returns, otherwise penalties will apply. Taxpayers who are currently eligible for payroll tax relief under the retail restaurant or hotel concessions must also file completed returns on or before the deadline. Failure to do so will result in penalties. For more information, visit www.taxbermuda.gov.bm or call 297-7807, 297-7750 or 297-7751. Making your taxes a little less taxing. People and Places is next with Charles Webb. People in Places with Charles Webb is brought to you by Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. With Good Friday coming up, our thoughts turn to hot cross buns. And in order to make the best hot cross buns, I came to an expert, Danielle Aguirre, who is the head baker here at Harrington Hundreds. And I asked her, how did she get into this profession of baking, especially good hot cross buns? Um, I started baking at Bermuda College. I was there for some time and then went off to Grotto Bay and learned different skills there, baking, cooking, and then I came to work for my uncle at Harrington Hundreds and I've learned the majority of what I know here. Now, when you think about baking, I think about Aguirre, the old man Aguirre who used to own the Crowley Bakery. Is there a relationship there? Um, yes, that is my great uncle, John Aguirre, who initially started Crowley Bakery 
Um, it was originally a, a bakery and a little convenience shop where you can get rice, flour, eggs, things like that. So what is it about baking that appeals to you? Um, I love food. I love to bake. Um, anything that involves food and baking is, that's me. Now, you know, here we have Easter coming up. Everybody wants to try hot cross buns. Now, if I wanted to make good hot cross buns, I know you have a family secret, but how would you direct me? You need love first, time and patience. Um, it's not a hard process, but it's definitely something that requires time and, yeah, um, patience. patience, yeah. But now everybody's trying to avoid sugar, and I see you spraying all the crosses and sh with sugar. Mm -hmm. How can I do that without all the sugar? You gotta have the sugar, man. <laughs> um, most people, some people do the sugar crosses, and some people do like a flour and water mixture that they'll put on the cross be before it's baked, and that way you can avoid some of the sugar that goes on top. Now, if I want to have my hot cross buns on Good Friday, when should I make them? Well, you want to make them um, the day before, if possible. Um, that way they remain fresh and soft and nice for your fish cake. Now, you say fish cakes. Doesn't the fish cake spoil the bun? No. It makes the bun. You have the sweetness from the bun and then the nice saltiness from the fish cake. You put it together, and it's all right. You fly a kite, you're good. When you left the college, I mean, what was it that made you want to actually go in and stay in baking? Was there something that really attracted you? Aside from the love of the food, um, I like to share it with other people. And I also, being at the, at the hotel, I wanted to, you know, there's no Bermudians left in this industry, so I wanted to show my passion and to the, to the, to the um, foreigners and the tourists. So now, let's go back to the buns. When it comes to making the hot cross buns, you make the sugar yourself. And then, does this harden on the bun or is it still soft? Um, it hardens a bit, but it's still relatively soft on top of the bun. Now, th these are whole wheat buns, are they? I, never, I, I don't quite tell. No, they're not whole wheat. Regular flour. With raisins? Yeah. And you're still not going to tell me this? Thing. Of course not. You <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> Danielle is teaching me the art of piping my hot cross buns, so I'm learning from the master. But she won't give me the family secret. Here at the Harrington Huntress Grocery with Danielle Aguirre for People and Places, I'm Charles Webb, BSB News. People and Places with Charles Webb has been brought to you by Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Want for much more furniture? Then shop at Big Saving Zone. Their prices are guaranteed, not estimates. Have you ever ordered something online expecting it to be a certain price, but when it arrives, it ends up being a whole lot more? Beware of those unexpected hidden fees. That never happens at Big Saving Zone. Their prices include all charges landed in Bermuda, so there's no surprises when your order arrives. Why settle for imitations? Shop at Big Saving Zone. At the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Good evening and welcome back. In sports tonight, the Dandy Town Hornets are today celebrating their fourth FA Challenge Cup title after a narrow 1-0 win over North Village Rams yesterday. That being Sunday at the Sports Center. Rico Trott netted the winner in the eighth minute. Rams head coach Ralph Bean Jr. and Town's chief coach Jomar Wilkinson spoke to Mike Sharp about the second finale. What happened out there? What happened out there? Scores one nothing. Town won the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I thought after maybe you went, they went down, a man or two could have maybe pulled it back. Well, they, fought, they fought off, they stacked the box, and you just wasn't able to, to find the penetrative pass in the end. Uh, oh, well, it's the uh, end of the season. Yeah, you know, this is the last game of the season. Put everything in, I'm proud of the players. Hats off the ton, they had a good season. They deserve the double. Jumai Wilkinson, head coach of uh, uh, the Hornets here. What a what a season. I mean, let's talk about this FA, then we'll talk about the season. 
yeah, what a, what a game today. Um, um, all, all season, my team has been um, um, challenged with a lot of adversity and uh, showed a lot of character. Um, today was, the, what a, was another good example of our character. Um, um, I'm, I'm proud of this team. I, all season, I worked our butts off. Um, um, and this validates that hard work does pay off. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm not surprised what they, what they accomplished this season. Right. Now, you pulled off the double. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once again, yep. Um, um, you know, we set out to win the Triple Crown this season. Um, um, unfortunately, we couldn't do it, but um, the double and, and uh, three trophies business is, 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 is very good. Yeah, yeah. Dandy Town, clearly, the team to beat next season. Yeah, I hope so. Um, um, you know, um, our team has in our... Uh, won the uh, league back to back or, or, or many trophies in the recent years back to back. Um, so that's the challenge I'm going to throw to my team for next year. In the Masters Cup final, the St. George's Stallions defeated Young Men's Social Club 3 1 with a brace from Lionel Can. In the opening PDL knockout final, BAA outscored Dandytown 4 3 to pull off the double. That's it for sports tonight. When we return, we'll have the weather report after this break. should do it. Enjoy your new shower. Experience the bold look of Kohler at a Kohler registered showroom. Hi, I'm Peter Jovetic, host of Season to Taste. Easter greetings to you all and welcome back to the first show of the second season. I'll be here on Tuesday night with VSB TV 11 News where I'll be preparing this lovely dish of lamb which is crusted with pine nuts, rosemary and Dijon mustard and find out from Neil what the Gosling's wine of the week is. Tuesday during the VSB TV 11 News. Well, some warm temperatures and some pretty good weather made for a great way to start the week. I'm Jay Barker, and this is your weather. Let's take a look at our weather shot for today. Well, today's shot taken by Chris Lopes, and I believe this is called Shark Hole down around Harrington Sound, and that really sharp bend right there. And you can see the blue skies were kind of making way to a couple of showers that were kind of sneaking in. This is a lovely shot. Flat calm in Harrington Sound, although it was pretty windy all the way around the island, and you did see some fair chop off the, north, uh, off the south shore. Thanks to Chris Lopes for sending this shot in. Our highs and lows for today, we saw 73 was our high temperature at 3 p.m. this afternoon. 65 degrees our low at 6 a.m. Currently, we're looking at 69 degrees, humidity 75%. Winds out of the east at 20 knots, and the barometric pressure is falling slowly at 30.18 inches. So far for April, we've seen 1.2 inches worth of rain. Brings our total to 20.29 inches, still up by about 4 inches on the 16.52 we'd normally have seen, but it definitely has seemed to slow down quite a bit. Let's take a look at our satellite map. Well, this high pressure to our northeast is maintaining a ridge over the area, and the winds will continue to be strong to moderate, but as this trough unsettles conditions. This will bring one or two passing showers tonight and into tomorrow morning. Winds should decrease to moderate by Wednesday afternoon. In the Gateway Cities, it'll be 61 and rainy in Atlanta, rain and 64 in Boston, 69 and rain in Charlotte, sunny and 61 in London, 86 degrees and mostly cloudy in Miami, rain and new in New York and 59, 87 and rain is likely in Orlando, Philadelphia, rain and 66, 34 and light snow in Toronto, so winter just never seems to die in Toronto right now, and Washington, rain and 64 degrees. For tonight, we're looking at around 65, mostly cloudy, chance of a passing or shower or two. Winds out of the east-southeast at 18 to 22 knots. For tomorrow, high temperature around 73 degrees, sunny periods with a morning shower or two. Winds out of the east-southeast at 8 to 22 knots. There'll be 32 knot gusts in the afternoon, so you can see it will be a little bit breezy. Then they'll be out of the southeast by evening. For tonight, there is a small craft warning in effect. Seas uh, inside the reef. 0 to 2 feet. Seas outside the reef, 5 to 9 feet, and the sea temperature, 71 degrees. Let me tell you, I went in the water on Sunday. It does not feel that warm. On right, for Mariners tomorrow, small craft warning right through the morning. Seas inside the reef, 2 to 3 feet. Seas outside the reef, 6 to 10 feet. High tide is at 9.23 a.m. Low tide at 3.18 p.m. Take a look at the five-day forecast. On Tuesday, sunny periods, a morning shower or two, high of 73. Wednesday, partly to mostly cloudy. 
high of around 73. Thursday, sunny breaks with a passing shower or two, high of 72. Friday, a mix of sun and clouds with a passing morning shower. The weather stays nice at around 73. And Saturday, partly cloudy and a high of around 74. I'd like to thank the Bermuda Weather Service. Hopefully that uh, weather, that, that rain we've got planned for Good Friday will be out of the way and you can get out and fly your kites. Special shout out to my friends down at the SO Collectors Hill who are uh, showing me some love. Thanks a lot. See you all real soon. And we thank you for choosing to spend your evening with us at VSB TV 11. Good night, Bermuda. VSB, TV11, Bermuda.